Hey, Hickok 45 here. We have a black box. It says Ruger on it. I wonder what it is. It's a Smith & Wesson. Nope. It's a Ruger SR9C. Probably have had as many requests to review, shoot, whatever it is I do, with a Ruger SR9 or an SR9C as maybe anything. Uh, I remember getting requests months and months ago Back when I didn't know what an SR9 was, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, I do know about a lot of different gun models, but still, there's a million of them out there. I remember answering somebody, must have been a year ago, nine months ago, in a, in a message. Maybe it's a comment, I don't know. You have an SR9? You're going to do an SR9? When are you going to do an SR9? You know, I thought, all I could do is answer, what's an SR9? I didn't know it was an assault rifle or what kind of thing it, it might even be. But anyway, I have learned a little bit more about some of the other models. Uh, trying to branch out a little bit, even though I've uh, messed with firearms for a long time. I don't keep up with some of the models as I uh, used to. Uh, and actually, I do better in the last six months or a year, I guess, because I am more interested. I'm engaged in conversations with various people uh, about them. So anyway, uh, very, very popular gun, becoming more popular, you know, the SR9. And this is the compact model, the SR9C. And I've had so many requests, I just decided I need to acquire one of these things. And uh, plus, when I was at the NRA convention back, uh, I guess it was May, and you know, all the exhibitors and gun manufacturers had everything set up there to where you could actually handle the firearms and snap them, had the firing pins out and everything. I remember picking this gun up and pulling the trigger and was pretty amazed at the trigger pull it had. I had never gotten that out of my mind when everybody mentions this gun. Uh, now what I'm going to do is tell you about this gun. I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to talk about it maybe more in connection or in comparison with the other guns in, in this genre, you know, the Glock 26 maybe. Everything I've seen on it that people are always talking about or have a picture of, of the SR9 versus the SR9C. Well, I've never had an SR9 in probably, well, I don't know, unless everybody wants to see one. Uh, but uh, I was interested in it because I like the little guns, and it seemed pretty cool. And these guns are becoming more and more popular. They're a real, uh, I guess you could say a bargain. You know, they're really at a, at a, at a nice price uh, point for what you get. They're a really nice gun. Uh, this has been my uh, impression so far. I just had a couple of days. They've shot, I don't know, 50, 60 rounds maybe. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed so far. And we'll talk about that. But I'm going to talk about it in connection with... Uh, the Glock 26 and maybe a little bit the PM9. Well, let me show you the box though. Uh, you know, this doesn't, this stuff doesn't excite me as much. If you bought a gun before, you know what comes in the box, the manual and the lock and the, the brass. What comes, uh, you have uh, a uh, floor plate with a little finger groove. And if you have seen many of my videos, you know, I don't really like those very much, but that uh, slips on. That was actually on one of the magazines and of course the standard flat floor plate uh, came with it it's the one that was lying around the box when I got it and I took this off and uh, put that one on that magazine okay so you get that with it and then you get you do uh, what comes with it let me tell you right off I bought an extra magazine or traded for that so what comes with it are uh, the standard 10 round magazine and then a 17 round magazine this comes with the gun so, and it does hold 10 rounds. Now, they don't come loaded when you uh, buy your uh, SR9C. There won't be ammo in the magazines. But uh, in the interest of time, we load that before the video. You get the 10 rounder and you get the 17 rounder. And I, as I understand, that's kind of the standard magazine for the SR9, maybe. And you get this little adapter. Now, these things generally, uh, this works better than I really thought it would. Uh, I'm typical, typical of me is to, before I even leave the gun shop or wherever I'm trading, say, hey, I'll tell you what, keep that and I'll uh, trade you for another mag or something. But actually this one, and this is a loaded magazine, the gun's not, it actually fits pretty neat. Uh, it's, it's snug and uh, kind of, as I understand, turns it into an SR9 in a lot of ways. You know, you got the full size grip there in the SR9C. So, so we're not loaded, of course, and show you that yet. But that's what comes in the box. So let me go ahead and take this out and I'll close it back up and get that out of the way for right now. Okay. And let's just talk about the gun. So I had a couple of XD mags left over from my XD reviews. I traded uh, for an extra Ruger mag. So we got those two. 
and then we have the 17 round magazine loaded. So, like I say, I fired it a few times, uh, I guess Saturday, maybe uh, yesterday a couple of times as well. And let's go ahead and fire it before we talk anymore. I'm going to move to shoot. I'm going to pop a magazine in. Now, these are hand loads. These are my 147 grain uh, loads with random brass, uh, unchecked brass uh, at that. So if I have any kind of problem, I haven't yet. I'm, I'm not going to lay it to the gun. Okay. Not bad. Let's put the big boy in there. It shoots. Okay. 10 round magazine, 17 round magazine. They all tend to work. So uh, let's take a look at it now. You have some interesting features on this gun. Now, again, I kind of put it in the same class. It's about the same size. Let's close it up, close up the Glock. Uh, you know, these, these guns are in the same category, of course. They're about the same size, right? So that's when I'm talking about, about this gun, I'm, I'm comparing it with other guns like it. The little uh, M&P, uh, you know, nine millimeter, uh, what they call theirs, the, I think theirs was a compact, perhaps they call it as well. And, and you know the other models, but the same class of gun about the same thickness uh, I, I know everybody considers this gun slim they talk about being a slim nine millimeter the Ruger slim line has such a nice slim line I guess it does but you know I I have uh, put the calipers on it it's really not that much different from the Glock in terms of size this is a Glock holster fits in there they fit about the same as far as tension and uh, that's what got me thinking I got the calipers out and uh, of course you can get the specs at the websites and uh, let me do that on the thickness of the Glock. This is a Glock 9mm, the 26. And I'm not going to get really technical. One guy gave me a hard time for doing this, I remember. Uh, but uh, I just want a ballpark suit. So there's not much different. This one's just a little bit thinner. I mean, just a hair. Okay, just a hair. I notice the frame at the thickest point is a little thicker. When I put it on the Glock at the thick point right there where it gets thick. Uh, and then go to this one. Got to open it up a little bit to, to fit. Okay, but not a lot of difference. Uh, I'm not criticizing you know either one. There's not enough to matter. So if you're buying this because you think it's thinner than a Glock or you think this is thinner than the SR9C, you're you're barking up the wrong tree. There's just really not much difference. The grip in certain places, I think it it's a little thinner down here at the base. Of course, I got the Talon grips here. And that's one thing I didn't measure. So I'm just this is reality TV again. You know, it is thinner there, down to bottom part of the grip. There is a difference, and that, that's probably what some people really like. Uh, at that bulge, it might be the, about the same, but that part down there, you can see a good bit of difference there. Okay? So I'm just trying to give you a ballpark idea, and I can tell that when I grasp it in the fingers. All right, so not a lot of difference uh, except down the lower part of the, the grip. Grip is just a tad bit longer on this than on the Glock. Uh, the whole world's familiar with the baby Glock, so it's probably one of the best ones to, to compare in, in, in some respects. Uh, what else is different? Uh, you have your safety. You have a 1911 style safety. Now that's something new for me to get used to on a polymer striker fired little Wonder 9 pistol. Okay, having a 1911 style safety. Seems to work fine. Uh, the only thing I have, issue I have with it is, you know, on a 1911, you know, I can grab a 1911 and reach up and pop the safety off it's very convenient on this gun it's so it's so far back for me but again my hands are so large but you see from the contour of it you may experience kind of a similar situation but then again i think cooper liked for you to use your off hand to do that i don't know uh, you see different schools of thought on that 
But that's the only thing about that. If it were about right there, it would feel better for me. I've got to kind of reach back to, to flip that off. Okay, so you have a 1911 style thumb safety. You have adjustable rear sights for elevation. So you can adjust that if you don't like the point of impact. Uh, there's a little spring in there. You have a, boy, this is uh, dramatic. Let me put a round in. You have a loaded round, loaded chamber indicator that is dramatic. Look at that dude. <laughs> if you have a round in the chamber, it sticks way up there. Okay. See, it says on the top, loaded when up. And boy, is it up. So, I mean, it's up to the point where it almost gets in the way of the sight. <laughs> like that. So, I don't that, 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 that strikes me as a, a little overkill, but it definitely works. Okay. So, let's take that round out. Uh, and then over here, of course, you use your extractor. You got a serious extractor, and I always like that. I don't care if it's big, you know, you want a nice, healthy extractor. That's important. And by the way, your, uh, your thumb safety is ambidextrous. You see it over on this side as well. All right. And trigger is, is you know, Glockish, of course. Uh, a lot of this gun, it, the, the whole frame is very much like the Glock. To break it down, you take it up. Take it back, of course, make sure it's unloaded. The manual says to take something and push the ejector down, but make sure you've got the slide lock up. I just put my hand on it and push down with my finger. That's kind of weird. I've never seen a gun that would even do that, but that has to be down. Uh, so push that down. And then, now I'm not, uh, I guess since it's new, I've not uh, been able to just push that out without using a pin or a punch or something there. Push on this side there, then that pulls that out so that you break down, point comes apart. And so that's what I'm pushing on there the ejector. It's kind of an interesting design. All right, other than that, it looks a whole lot like a friendly Gaston's Wonder, and which is fine. That's a compliment. You got your firing pin block, you know, and your striker and everything. You got a dual recoil spring here, you know, so. Nothing too unusual there, kind of what you'd expect. So, back in, and back together, and back, put the extractor back up, and see if I can get this back in. There we go. Okay, so it breaks down pretty, pretty simply, all right? It, it looks pretty good. It's a nice looking gun. It's one of the things that I noticed right away at the NRA convention at the Ruger booth. It's an attractive, fairly attractive looking gun and it feels good. It does have one thing I didn't mention. It has a, uh, a, I wouldn't call it a mainspring housing, but this back piece of the grip here is reversible. I did that. If you punch this pin out, turn it around, it comes out and then slides back in there. It's raised, but not very much. And in these little compact pistols, I can handle a little bit of a hump there. That's why the Glock hump doesn't bother me on a small gun because it fits up and tucks up into my hand just fine on a short grip. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just want it turned around. I turned it around and it wasn't enough of a difference, so I just turned it back. So you have that. Uh, what else do you have? You do have an ambidextrous uh, mag release there, if you notice. So this is a gun that's very uh, lefty friendly. You know, you got the, the, uh, I guess you don't have a slide release on the right, but you have the uh, thumb safety, ambide ambidextrous thumb safety, and then the ambi mag release. All right. And I think that's uh, pretty much got it covered. It does have uh, rails there. It has a rounded trigger guard. You know, that's kind of uh, different from a lot of the, uh, the modern guns. Okay. So let's load a couple more magazines here and shoot it some more. And I'll talk about my impressions here so far in terms of uh, my shooting experience with it. One thing about this gun, one of the most noticeable features of it, I cannot emphasize enough, is what a great trigger it has. It has a light trigger. It's pretty much unlike any gun in this class that I've ever fired. It's nothing like a Glock, unless maybe it's a competition trigger on a Glock. Let me get these here where I can get to them. Uh, it, it's a nice trigger, I mean to tell you, and I am thankful for that uh, 
thumb safety, that extra safety. Normally on these kinds of guns, I don't really want a thumb safety. And on this gun, however, I, I, I like it and I would definitely use it, I think, uh, walking around with it holstered. I did walk around the farm with it some yesterday, day before, and shot some. It's, uh, it's so light, uh, I feel almost as if I'm carrying a, a, you know, like a Target 1911 with a light single action trigger uh, with a safety off. Yeah, which theoretically is okay, I guess, if you're careful, but... Uh, so I get a different feel with this gun than I do with a Glock. Uh, it's all psychological, but boy, is it a light trigger. You got the same little trigger block and everything that the Glock has, that the Glock pioneered, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's so light, I want that safety on, generally speaking. Okay, if I'm going to be moving around with it much or I have it holstered, anything like that. Now I'm going to take this off and... Uh, We'll shoot the magazine. I think I've done that once without that on there too. Because this is pretty typical. A lot of people who carry a gun that say has a 10 round capacity or something as backup. I know when I used to work with the Sheriff's Department, I carried Glock 23 with standard magazine in it, 13 round magazine, but I'd always keep a couple of Glock 22 mags, you know, in my pouch. Because if you ever had to reload, something must be happening and uh, a couple extra rounds might be uh, desirable in that case, right? So, let's just take a few more shots here. Again, I'm shooting my hand loads with random brass. Pop the safety on. Yep, it works. One thing I did not show you, there's a round in the chamber. It does have a magazine disconnect. Yeah, some people don't like those at all. Yeah. I'd probably rather not have it. But just to let you know, it does have that. So the magazine is out. There's a round in the chamber, I think, as you can see <laughs> from that gigantic uh, chamber indicator loaded. <laughs> so there's a round in the chamber. I'm going to try to pull the trigger, and the safety's off. Actually, what's weird about this is the trigger will pull. Click, but it just won't fire. See if I can cock it like a Glock without, yeah. See? So that's what fooled me. I forgot, really, that it had that, because if you snap the the trigger without a magazine in it and you know it's going to act like a Glock or any other gun it's going to snap and so you think it would fire but it won't so that's an added safety Ruger's always big on all the safeties okay so put the magazine back in and uh, now we have to cock it again all right magazine in safety's off right there okay Oh, uh, let's just try some long range here for kicks. Maybe kill a couple of animals over there. You just don't tell PETA on me. Of course, I have to hit him first, don't I? All right. Since we got a nice trigger, I'm going to go for that chicken, too. Hit him, but he didn't fall. Let's go on to the bigger one. And maybe we'll come back for a smaller one. All right. Not bad, not bad, little gun, I tell you. Just for kicks, we'll take a few shots at the chickens. Well, let's go way out there at far chicken. Let's see how these sights are. I think they're right on. All right, next chicken.
takes too much concentration after a full day of work. Uh, okay, so the trigger definitely helps uh, when you're trying to do some old, I don't know if you call that pinpoint uh, shooting or pinpoint accuracy, but you know, having to really bear down, uh, nothing like having a nice trigger. And that's got it, no doubt about it. If you're like me and you like to, uh, to uh, even your small guns, play with them and stretch them out and see what they will do and what you can do with them, learn to shoot them really well, uh, you'll like this gun because as you can see, uh, you know, the gun will do it. The gun will do it. I feel pretty steady today. I think, you know, I think I could do that again. I mean, I, I have confidence in that gun and uh, I just feel pretty steady. Uh, let me get some now. Those are 147 grain rounds. Let's try some, make sure these work too. I've tried a few. These are 115 grain Walmart factory loads. The, I call them Walmart. Walmart doesn't make any ammo, do they? It's federal. Uh, the federal champion or just federal ammunition. It's that stuff you get at Walmart that, uh, that we all love because it's priced right. Uh, it's not sold just at Walmart, but you can't beat the price. I think uh, now that it's back on the market, the ammunition crisis seems to be mostly over. And so you can buy this for under 10 bucks or around 10 bucks a box. The only problem I have with all these rounds you find here and there at a great price at some of the discount stores is it's always it seems 115 grain uh, bullets and uh, I, I just like the heavier bullets so I have a hard time getting cheap even nine millimeter ammo unless I load it myself uh, you know it's not you don't even see 124 grain very often and I know that's a very popular uh, carry round and as I've mentioned before in my videos that uh, it's always wise, I think, to carry the same weight bullet that you uh, you practice with, or vice versa. And that's why I load 147 grain ammo, because that's what I keep in terms of gold dot or uh, Winchester, PDX, whatever the new stuff, you know, something like that. If I'm going to carry that in 147 grain, that's the round I want to be practicing with and, uh, and doing all my shooting with. All right. So let's try, let's try this. I think you see that it does shoot well. Let's take a few more shots. Okay, seems to cycle uh, that ammo. I know one criticism of the, the weaker 115 grain ammo, and, and quite honestly, I know I've read uh, on several postings that people have trouble with the Federal in some guns because it's a light bullet and it's not uh, maybe as high powered as some, I don't know, but it, uh, it won't work the slides on, on some guns reliably. Of course, if you just pink it on the range and you one out of 100 doesn't work the slide, it's nothing to lose a lot of sleep over, I guess, if you're getting a really good buy on the ammo. And you're getting the same point of impact that you want. The one thing I never like to do is shoot a lot of something that it's going to shoot like a foot low on that cowboy. Uh, and then I'm going to carry something that's going to be like right up high on it or something. Uh, that, that makes no sense to me, so regardless of the cost. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't want to make this a 40 minute video and you don't either, but the SR9C, uh, it, it, it shoots well. What can I say? Uh, you've seen the features of it. It, I think it just came out in early, early, uh, 2010 and, uh, it feels, it feels pretty good to me. I think I'll probably, uh, if I hang on to it a long time, uh, probably put some talon grips or, you know, cut some strips or something. Uh, but it's, it's not a bad feel the way it is. It has a texture right there on the front of the, the grip, and it has texture on the back of that rubber, and then the sides are kind of uh, textured, you know, so it's, it's not too bad. It feels uh, reasonably well. Not too bad in the hand. Uh, fits pretty well, and I, I had a different Glock holster, and inside the waistband, I came out of what, 
I was trying to decide what to, what to do when I first uh, was going to go out and shoot it some. Let me find something that maybe I can stick it in just to get by, you know, if it'll, even if it sticks out like that. So what? You know, I just want to try it. But I, uh, oh, it's this one right here. I grabbed the Don Hume uh, Glock holster here. And I was surprised, oh, great. You know, it fits <laughs> like the Glock 26 does. So I used that. So I would probably want a holster design for it, you know, but still to get by, it fits pretty well. So, uh, so not bad. Uh, feels good. Great trigger. Uh, haven't had any malfunctions. And uh, breaks down pretty, pretty simply. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be trading uh, my Glock 26 or 27 in for another one or anything. But uh, I kind of like it. I have to say, and I see what I understand the enthusiasm uh, for these guns, this SR9, and especially this SR9C. I think now that this is out, I'm not sure why. Well, I shouldn't say that because I'm so judgmental. I like the little guns. But I think a lot of people would be really happy with this if they're considering the regular SR9. Because for one thing, you get the full size magazine, it turns that grip into an SR9 grip, essentially, as I understand. You just have a slightly uh, shorter slide, I guess. But it feels good and it shoots really well. I don't have a lot of handguns I could bring out here right now in a semi automatic version that I could necessarily shoot any better. So, great gun. I'll have to give Ruger kudos for that. Uh, I kind of like it. It's a nice gun. And I think I say that about just about every gun I pick up and shoot because my favorite gun, I think, is the last one I actually fired. They're just so much fun. And uh, you all know that, and you know I just enjoy shooting them. The SR9C, uh, I'll have to say, it's a winner. Life is good.